Tonight we want to focus on a little different uh, thought for the last night of revival meeting. And uh, I feel like it's, it's a, a blessing to be able to focus on something like this. And, and uh, hopefully it'll be a, a stirring to us. Certainly that our world around us is in a lot of turmoil. And yet tonight we know that Jesus is going to win. In the end, Jesus wins. I want to talk to you about that tonight from Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. And I want to begin reading with verse number 7. Revelation 20 and verse number 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. And he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from heaven, from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Praise God. I want to share with you tonight uh, a little snippet that uh, I, I pulled together from last year's IH convention there in Dayton. And it was uh, sung by the Hope Sound Bible College Choir and has really been a, a minister uh, ministry to me. And, and uh, I appreciate this, this thought. And so let me just, if you'll just stay with me for a few moments here, let me, let me uh, play this for you just uh, about a minute. I hope you could pick up on that properly. Nothing ever can, nothing ever will overcome the Lord our God. He will reign victoriously. And tonight we, we see that sort of starting to play out here. Part of Revelation doesn't look very nice. Doesn't look like it's going to be in a, a very great uh, circumstances for the Christian. But he comes through victoriously. The poet has said, uh, somewhere back there years ago, all's well that ends well. And that's very true in the Christian life. All's well that ends well. We can put up with a lot of things as long as we know Jesus is going to win. The Battle of Waterloo, of course, we think about that, particularly related to Napoleon, and he was part of that battle. But actually, the people of Great Britain were waiting anxiously for word. Uh, and what they were concerned about, they wanted Wellington to, to defeat Napoleon and uh, make sure that they would be, be kept safe. And so uh, they're waiting urgently for word, you know, just anxiously wondering and wondering what's happening, what's going on in the battle. And finally the message came through, and it said Wellington defeated. The, the country was just plunged into mourning, not knowing what might be next. Uh, was, was there any hope for them, perhaps? I don't know what all they were thinking. But then... A late arrival explained that there, there was more to the message. There was a word missing. It actually was supposed to say Wellington defeated Napoleon. And suddenly everything turns around. What looked like it was defeat, what looked like it was, was terrible news, turns into the greatest news. And, and actually their, their wildest hopes and dreams were fulfilled. Great joy was all around because Wellington defeated Napoleon. Well, tonight, as we move into this last thought for the revival meeting, I want us to recognize 
that God is still on the throne. That uh, little snippet came from last year's IH convention, as I mentioned. But also the theme of that convention was from 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 57, that he gives us victory through Christ Jesus. And we are a people of victory tonight. It's so comforting and encouraging. And, and really in the, in the convention, I was just blessed over and over to think about the victory that God wants to give us. But you know, really, it even goes deeper than that. And sometimes we might, we might focus a lot on whether I have victory. And that's, that's key because all of Christ's victory, if I'm lost, is of no effect for me. And what a tragic thing to be lost in the midst of victory. And yet, uh, we recognize that, that uh, Christ's victory is assured whether we prove victorious. And we're, whether we overcome or not, Christ will be victorious. In fact, He is conqueror even now. Throughout the Bible, as we, we start looking, and really even probably in our own life experiences, we see the countless times it seemed as though the devil was interfering with God's plan. It seems as though surely he's going to win. Surely he's going to come through. Of course, we go all the way back to the Garden of Eden, and, and you have Adam and Eve, and, and all of their failure. And then you have Cain and Abel, and, and then a little bit later on you have Noah, and, and then on and on, uh, Job and David, and, and eventually Jesus even. Satan has been on the attack. On and on and on throughout history. He's still on the attack tonight. He wants to destroy every one of us. Sometimes maybe you or even I feel depressed. Even at the prospects of victory. Because it just seems like the devil just hounds us and hounds us and hounds us. And, and maybe sometimes you've just wondered, can I ever make it? Am I ever going to really truly come through victoriously? Am I going to, to be among the chosen few? In heaven with Jesus. But as that song snippet reminded us tonight, in the end, Jesus wins. And when we keep our hand in His, we can be victorious as well. We not, might notice even from our, our passage here tonight, in, uh, in verse number 10, you see it mentions the devil. Did you know? That we've got a couple chapters left in the end of Revelation, but this is the last time, I believe it's the very last time, we read anything about the devil. He's done for. He's cast out. This chapter finishes him off, and we see victory uh, for the Christian. Uh, his doom is sure. Notice the very end there, verse 10. He shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. The battle will be over, and Jesus wins. He is a victor uh, victorious over the enemy. Let me just point out a few basic truths. They're pretty simple tonight, but I just want to notice them with you quickly. First of all, no power can prevail against him. No power can prevail against Jesus. Take a look at the end of verse number 8 there real quickly tonight. It says that uh, there was a, the number as the sand of the sea. It looks like things are terrible. Satan has his best opportunity. He gathers this innumerable host and charges against the forces of God. It looks like the saints are at the, their end. His deception's at its height. He'll try to overcome the Lamb with the nations from the four corners of the earth. But you know, really, as bad as that looks just on the surface, he's no match. It's no battle whatsoever. It's no contest. You think about one of Jesus' temptations. Remember how he has several of them, but one of them in particular, Satan took, took Jesus up on the, on the mountain and he says, just take a look all around you here. See all these nations? I'll give them to you. All you have to do is bow down and worship me. I'll give you all the nations. Well, thankfully, Jesus overcame. But now Satan has all those nations. And now what's he going to do with them? He's going to fight against the saints. He's going to try to, to get the victory. Got, try to overcome the power of God. But all those nations he offered to Jesus, in obviously the wrong way, now he has them, and they are no match for our conquering Savior. He still prevails. No power can prevail against Jesus. Our obligation is to stay close to him. You want to overcome now? You want to overcome for eternity? You've got to stay close to Jesus. No power on earth can overcome him. He is victorious. He will always be victorious. No power on heaven in heaven and in earth 
can prevail in the, against the power of our Savior. Secondly, we also notice that no peril or no problem, we might say, is permanent with Jesus. Another important reminder for us, no peril is permanent with Jesus. When we move to the next verse there, verse number 9, it starts looking pretty bad. The saints are in trouble. They've come past the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. There's all sorts of things going on here. And, and the saints may have, in a sense, we might think of it kind of like as they're wringing their hands, you know. They're worried. What's going to happen? The enemy's all around us. The carnal eyes, it may look like the devil is going to just overcome after all. He's going he's gonna to come through. He's going he's gonna to win the victory. All the, the suffering of the saints, all the perseverance of the saints, all the struggle that they've gone through, it'll just be wasted. He's going to overcome them in the end anyway. It'll all just be forfeited. But as God has proven over and over in the past, he can completely turn around any situation whenever he wants to for the child of God. Notice what the last part, I didn't read that part to you, but it says, then fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Just when things looked hopeless, God steps in and in a moment of time, he could turn it all around. God can give the victory. God can deliver his saints. And fire came down to destroy the enemy. It doesn't matter what your problem is tonight. It doesn't matter how much you feel like you're discouraged or you're frustrated. How are we going to get through this? Whether it's the coronavirus or it's some other problem, whatever it is in your life. Maybe it's your own sicknesses, your own trouble. Maybe it's family concerns. Maybe it's financial needs. Maybe it's your own weakness spiritually, it seems at times. God is victorious and he can give you the victory as well. No problem is permanent with Jesus. But let me notice one more thing with you tonight. All of our perseverance is going to pay off. No perseverance will be pointless with Jesus either. The overall theme of this passage and the verses following suggest that it's all going to turn all right, turn out all right for the child of God. It will all be okay. There may be rough days and there may be hard trials and it may seem difficult to get through, but the ones who persevere and overcome will be blessed forever. Again, think of that song, the race. There are many that have started to run the race. They thought they would make it through successfully, but let me tell you, it's the one who endures to the end. He shall be saved. We can make it, but we have to make it, or all of the victory that Christ wins will be pointless for us. When we hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant, when we recognize our patience, our perseverance, our purity has been rewarded. All the suffering, all the sorrow, all the, the uh, difficulties in our lives, even maybe the hopelessness we've, we felt at times as the devil just came in like a flood, it will all be infinitely rewarded. And we will be home at last. Praise his name tonight. Persevere. Press on. You can make it if we just simply make it through all of the trials be worth it all. I, I like to think of that song from time to time. It's so familiar to us. We've sung it over and over, but it will still be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. What a day it'll be when we finally see our King of Kings crowned forever. He is victorious. He wins in the end. He's on the throne tonight. Don't, don't ever mistake that. But one day we'll get to see him crowned King of Kings and what a day it will be. But let me give you one more thought before we go tonight. One thing we must notice in closing is that even after Satan has been cast out forever, the unprepared still have to face God. And so let's just turn uh, to the next, for me at least, I have to turn the page and uh, go down at least to verse number 11. Let's read the end of the chapter. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was, no, there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God and the books were opened and another book was opened, which is the book of life. 
And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. It's a wonderful thing for us to focus on how Jesus is going to win. He is coming through victoriously, but we have to be ready. And so as we finish off this last, last time to, to share in this particular meeting, this particular truth tonight reminds us that, yes, Jesus will prevail, but we must be right with God. Holiness and carefulness and sincerity, perseverance, and that day will be prized treasures. They might not be appreciated much right now, but one day they'll be prized treasures. We must make it through. We must be faithful to the end. Even though Satan will be gone forever, the final tally for the soul will really come down to the fact of whether we chose the victor side. Have we chosen to walk with God? Have we stayed true? Have we been faithful? Have we kept our hand in His all the way through to the end? No matter how much the devil may fight you, maybe this week, maybe the coming week, maybe the next year, who knows how long we may have, but in those few, few days or, or weeks or months or years, help, uh, may God help us to be true and faithful to the end. Let's keep pressing on. In the end, Jesus wins. Are you on his side tonight? Are you ready for him to come? Are you ready to meet God? Thank God we can be. Thank God in the end, Jesus wins. Let's stand together tonight. Let's be sure we're staying close to him. Are you on the winning side tonight? Can you say it's good to walk with God? It's good to be his child. It's good to know we're on the winning side. You still have your hand in his is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? It can be tonight. Praise His name tonight. In the end, Jesus wins.